Welcome, welcome back. Hi, my name is Tracy and welcome to my home here in Sussex, England. This week it's all about the entryway styling. We're going to be decorating the hallway, you may call it entryway, you may call it hallway, and I've got a couple of bonus things for you. I've had lots of messages about how do I take my hydrangea cuttings? Well, we're going to be doing that this week, so I'll show you that. And if you've followed me for a while, you'll know I love my faux stone pot effect. Now I've got a technique that I use. I added to that technique a couple of videos back, and now I found another ingredient. It absolutely blew my mind, this. So I'm going to be doing some stone pots for the hallway, and I'm going to show you what my new secret ingredient is. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's amazing. More of that later. Well, come on, come on into the hallway. Now it's all been cleaned and I've got all the accessories out. This was originally a series of four pokey little dark rooms. There was no gallery landing. I basically ripped the place apart in order to create this full length hallway. It runs the depth of the property. After a final vacuum, we're going to start styling an old workbench that I picked up in Rye, which is a little seaside town not far from us. I do like a console table in a hallway, and this workbench is a perfect size just to slide under the stairs here and use like that. And yes, that is a working vice at the front. It's ideal if you're gluing something and you want to pinch it together. I often hang my handbag on it as well. I've had these old paraffin lamps for absolutely years and normally I use them outside, but I love the way that they've rusted up over the years. This wooden candlestick I found at a charity shop, it's solid oak, I paid £10 for it and I've given it the same finish that I've used on the mirrors, which is just white wax. Now there's one item that always lives on here and it's a vintage ball that my daughter used as a stress ball through all her exams and she got amazing results. This huge twig wreath that we affectionately call the tire was actually found at HomeSense and it was just ridiculously cheap. Even the shop assistant had to go and check the price, but I just love the color, the texture, and it works really well with the rustic tones in here. When we were at our last house, there were several outbuildings and in one of them, I found the original feet to what must have been a large cast iron bath. I think the bath was probably broken up at some stage in order to get it out of the house because these things are just a ton of weight. But the feet, I found them so decorative that I decided to keep them and I always have them out on display. The bowl is from this week's auction haul. It was a huge lot of glass and china for £18. The lion doorstop was originally black and I've just covered it in rub and buff. I do like fresh flowers in a hallway and particularly as you first walk through the door. So a few hydrangea clippings from the garden are going here. in a hallway is always very useful, as is a place to dump all your keys, tissues, sunglasses, all these things that you need in the same place so everybody knows where they are and this dresser provides just that. The two big pots here were both charity shop finds that I've done effects on and the greenery I have collected over the years 
I had this in a previous vase, uh, which is going to go and have another makeover. I say another one, it's had several. So I've brought this vase in because I like the height of it. Now the twisted willow there has come from the field. We've got a tree down there. And these pheasant feathers, I found them on the golf course. Sadly, the pheasant was no longer. I think the fox had had supper. So I thought I'd bring these home to use in arrangements. If you want to know how I did the effect on the mirror, then I have a video on that. dresser here is from auction it was only 50 pounds it's probably two three hundred years old weighs an absolute ton it's french and i just adore it the picture frame again was found at auction for just silly money just so cheap I, it was originally gold but i wanted it to coordinate with the dresser so i've given that a paint effect Leopard print is a neutral, right? Well, it is in my world. I bought this chair, gosh, it's got to be 25 years ago and had it reupholstered. And it's worked with every decor scheme I've had since. I don't think it's a big secret that I love mirrors. I love mirrored glass. And I also love to layer mirrors. It's a great way to create visual impact, even with cheap mirrors. These I've just given a paint job to and distressed and then just layering up just makes them look that little bit different. I want a pot for the end of this mantle here. So I think the time has come to reveal my super new ingredient. Here are three pots ready for the Tracy treatment. And I think that one in the middle might look very nice on the end of the mantle there. And for those of you that saw my recent kitchen video, you'll recognize this one. It's one that I took out. There's nothing wrong with it. I just don't like the color anymore. Bertie can definitely smell something. And I don't think it's the filler that I use. And I certainly don't think it's the soil that I'm gonna use. It's probably the cayenne pepper and my new secret ingredients, crushed chilies. The pot was way over its sell-by date and I hate waste at the best of times. And it suddenly dawned on me, it could look like flecks in stone. So here's a quick recap on how to do this. If you want a full tutorial, there is a video there. So I mix the easy fill, uh, which is wall filler. You use it for filling in holes and cracks in wall with water, make it into a nice paste and then start working it into my vessel. Now, some vessels are more absorbent than others. So if you're working with glass, it's gonna take a lot longer and you've got to build it up in layers. We just start patting it. And if you do it on a really warm day, it dries really quickly. Cold temperatures, longer oh you can accelerate the drying time with a hairdryer or a heat gun then I start to work in the compost the soil different types of soils will give different effects I'm using a compost here because it's got different matter in it it's quite fibrous so again you know it just creates that different texture also remember that when it dries it dries much lighter so don't be too worried if you think you've gone too dark and I do take the effect into the inside of the vessel or as far in as I can get to. Don't tend to do the bottoms because I want it to sit flat. 
The cayenne pepper is a new discovery for me and the effect is wonderful. It just gives those burnt orange tones that you often see in stone. And then the chilies, just press them in, just keep smudging them and moving them. And you can put more of the filler mixture over the top. And this is what it ends up looking like. Stunning! I'm going to be checking all my herbs and spices now and anything past its sell-by date will not find its way into the bin. It will be finding its way onto a pot. So here is that grey pot given a new lease of life. I'm adding some hydrangeas here. Now these are faux and I love them because the stems are detachable so you can use them in arrangements and I'm thinking actually these are going to be fabulous for autumn fall for my big door wreath. I love my earthenware and when I was at auction this week I also bagged another three pots but much much bigger than these for £30 so you'll start to see those appear in fact one of them is going to live in the hall. I recently stripped the oak torchair here and white waxed it and it's the perfect height for that other vase that I've just done. This was remember the green one. And no, I'm not kissing it, I'm smelling it. There is a slight smell of chilli. And here's a first appearance for this big bad boy. Hubby's first response was, do we really need another one? This end of the hallway has a quiet, tucked away little corner, so we call it the reading nook. Now these chairs were originally bright red, picked them up for £5 each, did a paint effect on them and I do have a video. All the videos that I mentioned that I say I do have a video, I'll link in the description below. The big pot on the windowsill in the middle there is one that I fell out of love with the colour. I love the shape and the size. So to create the effect, I used up lots of old white spray paint, uh, repeatedly spraying when the paint was wet to create that hazing. I put a heat gun on it. I rubbed builder's sand into it. It took about two weeks to dry, but the effect better than I ever thought it would be. So I'm really happy with that. The floor lamp that we use at this end of the room has had a makeover. I ripped the fabric off the shade, wrapped it with twine and did the same on the flex, finishing off with chalk paint and wax.
I do love a hallway and entryway to really greet you, to greet me, to greet my guests. But I also like that experience to start the other side of the front door. In my spring porch decorating, I used faux blossom and leaves on these branches that I'd taken from the field. Now you may be thinking, well, why doesn't she just plant climbing roses? And believe me, I would if I could. That pea beach is actually hiding a multitude of sins. When we bought the house, there was a huge conservatory attached to the front of it. So there's masses of concrete underneath there and it's just going to be too expensive and too disruptive to move. So I just make it pretty with all my hydrangeas in pots but I still like the effect of that archway. I'm going to try using some of this ivy that I generally use in my Christmas styling and also some rose heads. Now these are actually super soft. I don't know if they're rubber, foam, but they come with wires, so I'm thinking I can try wrapping them around the twigs, around the branches and weaving that faux ivy through as well. So that's the kind of, I'm just doing a little trial here, see what it looks like. From a distance, I think it'll look fine. It might look complete pants, but you know, if you don't try these things, then you never know. And I'm always willing to risk it for a biscuit. So that's how it was. And this is how my first attempt has come out. So I'm quite pleased with that, actually. I'm gonna keep on adding more to it. I'm gonna work on the other side and work my way through all of that ivy and then keep on adding the roses. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not trying to replicate anything. I wouldn't be mixing cherry blossom, apple blossom, maple leaves and rose heads if I was trying to replicate something from nature and then wrapping ivy through it all. It's all just in the name of fun. Now I'm off to pick some hydrangeas. So let me show you how I do my cuttings. This was last year and within a few weeks they'd grown this much. So I planted them off into individual pots and here we are 12 months later. They're growing so well, so vigorously. Different heights, uh, some are flowering, some aren't, but they're all looking really healthy and I've only lost a couple of them. There are several ways of taking hydrangea cuttings, but I'll share with you the way that I've been doing it. I use a good quality multi-purpose compost and then I normally do about 20 to 30, somewhere like that, cuttings. Um, I'm looking for a non-flowering shoot, so not using one with a flower on it, and probably two to three pairs of leaves. And it's important to look for cuttings near the base of the plant as woodier cuttings will generally produce more roots. I'm cutting above the leaf nodes to remove the excess leaves. And then with the leaves at the very top, I'm gonna to take a pair of scissors and cut those in half. The reason being is to help increase root production. This is why I also use a rooting powder as well. So you can use um, a liquid or a powder form of rooting hormone and they will propagate without rooting hormone, but the roots will grow more quickly if you use it. I always put my cuttings into a bucket of water, particularly if I've got a large amount. Uh, just to keep them hydrated. The same as I would never take a cutting from a plant that had wilting leaves. Always make sure that they're full of moisture. With the rooting powder on, I push them about two inches into the compost. Now I am gonna try and take some Annabelle cuttings as well. I've not done Annabelle before, so this is an experiment. So it'll be interesting to see how I get on. So as with the other cuttings, I'm gonna put probably about five in each of these pots. And then in two to three weeks, I'll see if the root systems have formed. If they have, then I'll move them on into individual pots where they'll remain in this courtyard through the winter. If you have extremes of temperature, then do bring them indoors. And do remember, if you are leaving your hydrangeas outside, then the cuttings need to be protected from the wind, protected from frost, and also they don't really want to be in lots of direct sunlight out there in the courtyard 
it is quite shady most of the time, lots of natural light, but they only get direct sunlight just a couple of hours at the end of the day. Back to finishing the porch. Now I've got this big old bell, we call it the dinner bell, and it's great for ringing when food is ready because you can hear it all over the gardens. And I've noticed a few deliverers just lately have taken to ringing the bell. The poor dog keeps running around expectantly trying to find the food. I'm bringing some more hydrangeas in here, some nice big pops of pink, and even some faux flowers in a basket. Now I got these from Home Fence and they were reduced to just 90 pence each. Well, I couldn't resist that, could I? So to shorten them, I just bend the stems and hide them in the great big pine cones. Just a quick reminder, could you turn on notifications because I don't always post at the same time or on the same day. Thank you.